As PHP developers, there are lots of language features that we need to know in order to make our code easy to read and maintain. Without explicitly being told about a part of the language, it's hard to know that it even exists. So today we're going to discuss magic methods that our classes have and how we should be using them to write code. Hello developers and welcome to the PHP Architect channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Scott Keck Warren, and on this channel we discuss a wide variety of topics related to the PHP ecosystem. Make sure you subscribe so you can get our latest videos when they're published. Magic methods are a special method that are defined inside of the core PHP language that gets called when certain actions are performed on an object. They give us the ability to override how PHP would interact with the object normally and inject our own logic in there, into its place. Magic methods are prefixed with two underscores and have a wide variety of uses. To make this video easier to listen to, I'm actually not going to say underscore underscore every time when I say the name of the methods, so you'll actually want to listen to it and so I don't mess up the name constantly. All of the magic methods are optional, so don't feel like you must create them. They're here to make our job easier and not to create extra work for us, at least not intentionally. Without a doubt, the most important magic method in PHP is the construct method. The construct method is used to define how a class should be constructed or initialized. The body of the construct method should include things like initializing variables and calling other functions inside the class. Unlike other programming language, PHP only allows for a single constructor. So if you have multiple ways that you might want to initialize a class, you'll either need to jump through some hoops by providing internal logic that determines what to do based on the different parameters you might pass, or use something like the factory method design pattern, which provides static functions to provide different ways to initialize your class. An example of the factory method design pattern is how the date time enumerable class can create the itself from different formats. The destruct function is used when there are no more references to a particular object or during PHP's shutdown sequence. This is useful to clean up resources like connections to external services or pointers to files that your class may have created during its lifecycle. For a quick example, we have this class on the screen where we're going to echo the name of the functions as they're called, so you can kind of see the sequence of the function calls. The next two functions that we're going to discuss are the call and call static function. These are called by PHP whenever we attempt to call a function or static function that doesn't exist. So instead of issuing a fatal error, we can intercept the call and perform some sort of a useful action in its place. The name argument is the name of the method that we called, and the arguments argument is an array containing the parameters passed to the method that we're trying to call. Now, there are several use cases for this, but the one that I always like to use for them are to be able to write functions that allow you to pass a parameter as part of the function name. That way we can write a function call like where name Scott and have it be equivalent to where name and Scott. It's a small difference that makes the code a little bit easier to read. The other use case I really like for this is to be able to dynamically remap our function calls. For example, we might be renaming a function, and we need to keep the old function name around, but we want to keep it hidden from new development. We can do so by using the call and call static function. Now, the huge downside to using the call and call static is that our editors and any static code analysis tool like PHPStan won't know about them. To get around this, we can define the function as part of the doc block at the start of the class declaration. We'll have more about magic methods after this word from our sponsors. Do you want higher clarity in production, but don't have the time to earn a degree in observability? Me too. Forget logs, metrics, and traces. HoneyBadger Insights is built around structured events. When you send your application's logs and other events to HoneyBadger, you'll unlock the power of HoneyBadger's powerful new query language, BadgerQL. Then you can use BadgerQL to ask any questions about your data, convert an event into a metric, and chart your metrics on custom dashboards. You can do all of this on HoneyBadger's free plan as part of their comprehensive monitoring suite, which includes error tracking, uptime monitoring, status pages, and more. Speaking of error tracking, did you know that an error is really just a first-class event in HoneyBadger? In fact, you can use Insights and BadgerQL to explore all of your existing HoneyBadger data in new ways. It's pretty cool. Give it, give it a try today at HoneyBadger.io. That's HoneyBadger.io. The next batch of magic methods provides logic to support inaccessible or non-existent properties. The get and set magic methods are used in reading or writing, respectively, to an inaccessible or non-existent property. And the isSet method is used when calling isSet or empty on an inaccessible or non-existent property. The unset magic method is called when running unset on an inaccessible or non-existent property. 
Now, there are a couple of use cases for these, but there are two that I'm fond of. The first is providing a way to have a class track all of its data inside of an array instead of using properties. This is helpful if we're loading an unknown number of properties, maybe from a database or an API, and need to keep them in a form that we can easily manipulate and then send back to a persistent layer or an external service. This has a series of downsides to it, but it is a fast way to provide data access. The other is to be able to rename a property and provide access to the old name while you or others update the code. Again, the huge downside to this is that editors and static code analysis tools won't know about the properties because they're magic. To get around this, we can define the properties as part of the doc block at the start of the class definition. The serialize and unserialize magic methods are used by PHP when we serialize or unserialize an instance of our class to determine which properties should be included and how we want to encode the data. We did a whole video about serialization in PHP and you should go check that out. As an example, we have the user class on the screen. We can then call the serialize function on an instance of the class and get a string that represents the class. Now, normally, PHP would just take all the properties and put it in a string. In this case, we would define the serialize method of the class, which gets called to define which properties actually get exported. For example, we don't want the password. Then we can call it the unserialize function on this string and recreate the class as it existed. In this case, we've defined the unserialize method, which gets called with an associative array containing the values that we can use to unserialize the, the class. There's also a set state magic method that is much like the unserialize function, but it's used to recreate a class exported using the var export function. I'm not going to demo how it works because it's really hard to argue why most people would need it when there are better options. If I'm wrong, let me know in the comments section. The toString magic method is used if we attempt to convert an instance of our class to a string. This can be useful if you want to be able to easily output your class in a format that's readable. I will sometimes include this in classes that I need to apply some formatting like a user class where we track the first and the last name separately. Then we can use the toString method to concatenate them automatically when we display the user. The invoke magic method is used to allow us to call an object as a function. This is useful if you need to pass a callable argument to a function and need a way to organize the callable for later use, rather than writing identical closures in multiple locations. The clone magic method is called just after an instance of the class has been cloned. This is helpful if you need to update a property or do a deep copy of the object. As an example, in the class below, we're keeping track of when the class was created. When we clone the class, we need to update the created property with a new date time immutable, which we can easily do with the clone method. The debug info magic method, which annoyingly is the only camel case magic method, is called by the var dump function to get the properties that should be shown. This can be used if we have sensitive data that we don't want output to the screen in any fashion. As a brief recap, magic methods are methods that we can define on our classes. They interrupt the standard PHP logic, and there's lots of different options and use cases for them. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, make sure you subscribe, comment, share, and like, as it does help others find us. Other topics that you'd like to see me cover, let me know in the comment section below, or send me a message on php.social at Scott Keck Warren. I always love to know how I can help you, and I always love it when I hear from a fan. This is Scott Keck Warren for the PHP Architect channel signing off and reminding you to keep watching, keep coding, and keep reading. Thank you.